Guys, Gazi again, light up your den. Me and my Alps, we'll be at it again. Horse ready, sword ready. Take a man's head if you talk heavy. If you live by the rules and you're talking the truth, you won't get buried with your head. What's going on, guys? Welcome back for part two. This is where it all gets very interesting, and this is what you've all been waiting to hear. The story behind the fire. Now, before we start, I just want to touch base on the fact that there's three um, segments to this video. I mean, we call it episodes, but it's not really episodes. It's episodes if, you, if, if it's entertainment. We don't see this as entertainment, but obviously, you know, perhaps the wrong word, word was used. But this is three segments to a video that's extremely long. Nobody wants to sit there watching a two-hour long um, video with me just talking. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's extremely boring, and um, it's better if we separate it to make sense for you guys to understand actually what's going on. So you've got the backstory, which is what you watched already. Now you've got the whole fire, the, the uh, accusations put towards us, um, the fraud, all of that. We're going to handle that in part two, which is now. And then in part three, we're going to handle the accuser, yeah? And discredit that person with factual proof and evidence that you can't take his word for what he said and what he's, what he's accused us for. And then we'll end it at that. Like I said before, we have no intention to slander or discriminate or put anyone down or use this opportunity to try and fire shots, tit for tat. We're not on any of that stuff because if he is going to come back with a response, then do you know what? Good luck to him. We are not interested in responding anymore after that. Okay, so start with, um, let's replay the clip. To myself, let me just do it in a professional manner and let the people see what Cash is really like. You're going to jeopardise this whole thing, bro, when I'm saying to you, trust me, bro, I've done this in the past, he's done it in the past, and all the other things he was saying, bro, like I said, my, my fire was the 26th of November. Right now, this is the only way, the cleanest way, the straightest way. You've just been sitting on it for a few months and just get it done. Job done. Right. So let's touch on that for a second. What, for a minute, should I say? First of all, the picture that he's put out there isn't even my workshop. Don't know where he's got that from. That's not even my workshop. Most of the cars in my fire survived. Um, and if it was an insurance job, then surely I would have made sure that they would have all set fire. But anyway, let's, we'll talk about that in a minute. He then proceeds to play a voice recording or of a phone um, of a conversation that's been had. Now you can clearly hear in that voice recording that there's no admission to any fire ever being deliberately made. Look. <laughs> How does that in any way, shape or form admit to setting my place on fire? This is obviously after the fire because I, I clearly say my fire was on the 26th of November. What's been said there is you're going to jeopardise this claim. That's what that means. And it makes sense when you listen to the rest of it. So admission to it being done in the past, okay? He's relaying that to fires in the past. I have no history of any fires ever taking place in any of my workshops. I've been in the business 20 years now. Never, I mean, that picture's not even my workshop, as I said. I don't know whose workshop that is. Um, looks like it belongs in the 1970s. But anyway, <clears throat> there's no admission there. And then he's done it in the past. That's the person that he's being referred to to help him get paid out for his claim for his car because his car was not insured. The guy was in a really, really bad place. That car, that car was his life. It was everything to him. And I felt for the guy. I felt bad for him. So, you know, you can clearly see that ill advice would have been, was given to him at the time. Um, and he was being put in touch with people that could have helped him. Straight up. That's basically what the rest of the voice recording will show you. Um, and there's nothing... There's no hiding behind any bushes. It is what it is. You mentioned that this guy is also a kid. Let me just tell you firsthand, this guy is far from a kid. I'm actually really surprised and disappointed that this guy went to the lengths that he did to rat me out. And if I wanted to, I could go through my phone and prove that right now and show you all what this guy's actually on. But if I did that, that would make me a rat and a snitch just like both of you. And the circle that you guys are in and the people that are egging you on. 
Okay, so let's touch on the MOT um, that was mentioned in the um, in the voice recording. Obviously, yes, it's uh, incriminating. Um, an MOT is being offered without the car being present. But let's just think about this for a second. Okay, fine. I mean, it wasn't done. So, you know, uh, there was no crime that was ever committed. Um, and yes, there was ill advice given. But since 1992, every vehicle has been fitted with a catalytic converter. Every vehicle comes as factory from standard manufacturers. And today it's a legal, uh, it's a legal requirement for every car to have a catalytic uh, converter in place to pass an MOT. Now we all know that many cars on road now, especially the tuned ones and all the rest of it, do not have that. We all know that, right? Then we know that they don't have catalytic converters. They've removed them for tuning purposes and all the rest of it, yeah? And we all know that MOT test stations are passing them left, right and center. So it begs the question, how these services are so easily available out there, isn't it really? It's very easy for me to say, go and see so-and-so, you get your MOT done without seeing the car. I'm not doing it, I'm not an MOT tester, but it's available, isn't it? It's readily available out there, there's people out there that are doing it. Same way cars with decats and all that sort of stuff are being passed, simple. It's out there, so there's people out there that are doing the same shit that that's being offered. It's also worth mentioning while uh, we're on this topic, how many of you like to go to Companies like myself and others, doesn't matter what field they're in, if they can offer you a service, how many of you ask them to pay cash? How many request that? Can you take cash? No VAT. How many of you? Think about that for a second. I could probably comfortably say at least 80% of you do that. So if you don't know already, that's fraudulent. And to all those businesses out there that are accepting cash, you are also all committing fraud. So you can't shoot me down and say, I'm the bad guy because of a little bit of ill advice that was given. Remember, no fraud was committed. When the police came here, he says in his video, you'll get seven years for what you did. Really? But when the police came here, why didn't they do anything? They didn't do anything at all. They said, so hang on a minute, Mr. Army, can we just clarify? So this is just words, ill advice. Was any action taken on it? Were there any crimes committed? No, they weren't. No, they weren't. It was a moment of desperation to try and help someone that was in a very dire situation and needed help, needed assistance. He, want, he didn't want to lose out on his, on, on his vehicle. The fact was he did have a McLaren, he did own a McLaren. The fact is he did lose a McLaren as well. His mistake for not insuring it, it's his vehicle, the onus you know, lies upon him. It's his responsibility to insure, it's, it's everyone's responsibility to insure your own stuff. So it covers you for when the car's not with you, whether it be with another workshop, whether it be on the road, in your driveway, anywhere. That's what it's for. And he wasn't insured. Okay, I, I want you to bear in mind that um, I didn't have to help this guy at all. Why would I go out my way to help this guy and incriminate myself and it doesn't do me any favours whatsoever? Why would I do that? It begs the question, right? Think about it for a second. This is business. As far as I'm concerned, he needs to handle this with his lawyers and the lawyers need to handle it with my insurance company, an insurance claim that's still ongoing, okay? I don't need to be talking to him privately and personally about this. Do you know what I mean? He wasn't my friend. He was just someone that I knew. We was on the level and that was about it. Well, actually, I didn't know him. I only knew him from him bringing his car to me, yeah? It's only because I felt sorry for him for what he had lost and I felt the pain that he was going through and the pressure that he was putting me under. Because every week I was getting calls from texts or months. Have you been paid? Have you been paid? When are we getting paid? And it was just getting so frustrating for me that I was like, you know what, man? Like, if you don't, don't understand that this is a big claim, a claim that, first of all, the insurance companies are going to do their level best to try and get out of and not pay anyway. But secondly, a claim that will take year, like years upon years to settle. Might take one, two or three or four. COVID was in between. We only got the London Fire Brigade report just in July 2021. And that's like a year and a half after the fire. And for the very first time, I'm going to be putting out sensitive footage from the fire itself that shows you what caused the fire. It was indeed the McLaren. This is CCTV footage that shows at one o'clock or gone one o'clock in the morning, the McLaren Set a light to itself, by itself, which caused the fire. Have a look for yourself. Well, as you can see, it's 26, 11, 2019, and the time has just gone 
Um, that's the Audi Audi car in the middle, and to the left of it is the McLaren in question. You can see the light glow underneath the bonnet. That's the fire starting, which slowly turns into a blazing inferno. Okay. Bear in mind that this is in a pitch black darkness. You cannot see in there whatsoever. You'll need a torch. We left at 7 p.m. in the evening, all of us. And the timeline from not only the alarm logs, but the CCTV also show that we all left at that time. So unless I put some sort of time bomb in this place, there's no way of detonating that from home, which is where I was, okay? That's an electrical fire that has started in the McLaren, which caused the fire and caused my livelihood to burn to the ground. The CCTV was given to the police upon request on site when they came to the premises and they were carrying out the investigation, which you'll now see in the next clip. But there you go that completely goes against what he's saying he talks a whole load of nonsense in the rest of the video not only have you fucked over this poor soul that has given you his car to fix right by doing an insurance claim on his car you've been paid out millions for all the customers cars that were at your unit and you've not paid them a single penny and on top of that you put their back against the wall and said I now need you to do an insurance claim on your car to get your money back. So he's now claiming, and this is a very serious claim, that I've been paid out from the insurance. Now anyone with half a brain cell, anyone especially um, that's learned in the industry will tell you that there's no way on God's given earth that an insurance company would pay me for everyone's vehicles. I can't believe that he's actually saying, that goes to show how thick and un un uneducated this guy actually is to put a claim out like that. When an insurance claim is settled, they will, well, they already have taken names and details of every um, vehicle owner from the workshop that was there, who had the car there, sorry, and they will contact them direct, their insurance companies, they will contact their insurance companies and liaise with them direct that when it comes to a time of settlement, that money will go to them. It's actually qu uh, quite easy for anyone to find this information out anyway. You only got to ring up an insurance specialist, ring them up and ask for advice and they'll give you the advice, free advice, no problem. Some of the clients that are involved in the situation can contact their insurance companies direct themselves and get the answer to that. Would cash get paid out for our vehicles when it comes to cars being settled? Now, let's talk about other reasons as to why I never torched my own garage. Let's talk about the time that it was done. So everyone knows that the time the workshop was set on fire, we was filming for one of the biggest opportunities, major breakthrough opportunities that we've ever had in our life, okay? BBC. This, this was what dreams are made of. This is what, we, what people dream to achieve in their life, and we had it in a bag. We was filming for season two of Supercar Superfam at the time and the story was again another milestone for us that they were filming now he might not be aware of this most people that follow us do but many people in the industry that don't follow us who have just heard this bullshit come out of his mouth won't know this we was building the first wide body ferrari 408 in the world custom bespoke we wasn't using someone else's body kit you know we uh, pride ourselves on being our own designers and fabricating and manufacturing ourselves, you all know this. And we was building our very first Ferrari 408 wide body. This was a major breakthrough for us because not only was we building one of the most amazing builds that we was going to build at the time, we was actually featuring that that story was being featured in BBC. Why on earth would I think about it for a second? Look at what I'm gaining, putting our workmanship and our expertise out there on a public platform that will go out to millions to showcase how great we are at what we do, opposed to doing an insurance claim 
and not even receiving, not even not even a quarter of what that would generate. Because you've got to remember, I'm not receiving a penny of the money paid out for anyone's vehicles. I'm only going to get out what I've lost in that fire. Personal belongings and any of my own cars. That is it. Furthermore, this was a record-breaking year for us in terms of profit, how much money we was making. We lost more revenue in that fire than we would ever receive from the claim. Not to mention the fact that all, most of the invoices were outstanding. I never got paid for any of them after the fire. The clients obviously didn't pay me. Of course, why would they? Some of the smaller jobs were paid for, but the major jobs, no. No, they got paid for. Over 300 grand was lost in revenue. Just revenue alone. So these allegations that he's put towards us in this video, they're actually of a criminal nature. It's a crime, what he's saying. What we've done is a crime. Fraud, uh, torture in our own place. But it's also worth mentioning that this was actually a criminal case for three days. As soon as the fire was put out, police took over, the place was cordoned off, and for three days we were not allowed to enter the premises. They took the CCTV and it was taken away immediately as soon as they entered the premises. They, they also carried out a fire investigation. They had their own forensics enter the building, do their, do their stuff, whatever they do. Uh, and we were not allowed in until three days until they were satisfied that it was not arson. Had it been arson, it would have been cordoned off for way longer. Yeah, we would not have been allowed back in. But they were satisfied it wasn't arson and they let us back in. It's also worth mentioning that if we had torched our own place and we planned this, then why the hell would we leave our CCTV in there running to give the police hours and hours and hours of prior footage leading up to the fire, which would have incriminate, incriminated not just me and my brother, but anybody else that would have been involved, planting bombs, as some, some people have put it, you know, <laughs> all that sort of stuff, yeah? So, surely, we would have taken the CCTV out. But no, they took the CCTV, and it shows the whole timeline from well, days and weeks before leading up to the fire, in chronological order, the timeline, from weeks prior to the moment the CCTV turned off due to the fire, power cut. So again, as I was saying, if we'd done it, they would have seen it. Well, of course, we didn't do it, but what you do see is the McLaren go up in flames by itself. So that's proof in the pudding. I was at home. The alarm went off because the power cut from the fire. When the power cut, it's, it rang me. Now, I missed the call, but it rang the second in line, which is my missus. So when she picked up the phone, she rang me up. No, actually, sorry, tell a lie. She looked at the cameras at work because she had it on her phone. She could see smoke. So immediately, she rang the fire brigade, then rang me. I literally zatted it down there. And when I got there, there was nothing going on. I couldn't see no fire. I couldn't see no flames. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't see no smoke. I ran to the other side of the road to see if there's anything coming out the back. Nothing was happening. So I phoned her and I said, I don't know what's going on because, you know, everything seems fine here. But then while I was on the phone to her, I could hear explosions. Um, and when I touched the shutters, they were warm, really warm to touch. So I knew there was obviously now something going on inside, a fire, of course. Um, and one week prior to the fire, there were brand new shutters installed, electric shutters. Now, why would I do that to myself if I was planning something, something like this? I left the old shutters, which were the old pulling style, I left them on with three padlocks and then the new shutters that were installed, the electric ones, came in front. And when the guy said to me, should we take the old ones out now? And I said, you know what, leave it. It's double protection, just leave it there. They put the new ones in because the old ones were horrible to pull, pull and close. Only me and Shabs could do it. You needed really like a lot of strength to, to, to operate them. So yeah, again, another reason why we wouldn't do it. Now, when I got there, the alarm button, sorry, the fob for the uh, shutters, wasn't working. Shutters wouldn't go up. Look at it now as a blessing because had they gone up, I would have been in there fighting that fire myself and God knows what would have happened. Now, most of you that remember that, that time, it was a very difficult time for all of us. Very difficult time for me and my family. So, damn you for bringing this up and making us uh, relive the whole situation. But it is what it is. Uh, we've got thick skin so we can take all your slandering, your defaming, your attempts to assassinate our good characters. But... It's not going to make no difference whatsoever. You think this video is going to uh, affect my brand? Well, you're very wrong. It's, going to, it's actually made people far more aware of our brand. And people that know, know. It's very simple. People will see through your bullshit a mile off. And that is exactly what this video is. Yes, there's incriminating a voice recording. But you know what? The only thing that's come out of that by sharing that voice note, um, not only from you and putting it on your platform, but by the guy that's given it to you as well. So both of you's 
have done what we call snitching. You guys have both snitched and ratted man out. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's not something that we condone. We just don't, do not do that. It's not what we do. And that's what you're going to be remembered for, both of you. And let me tell you again, more reasons, even more strong evidence that tells you why I didn't do this for myself. I saved five cars from that fire and you're going to see them now being dragged out from the fire. An E30 BMW that was driven out. A Ferrari 488 that was on the ramp that was in for repair. That was taken down. That is now being repaired and back on road. Okay? Nothing claimed on that car. My two GTRs, Nissan GTRs, both drove out that fire. Yeah? They both drove out. Saved them. That's four cars now. Okay? The Bull GTR, the very famous build that we did, unfortunately, was lost in the fire. That was in front of the McLaren. On the side of the McLaren was my Audi audio car. Now, it was only an Audi, um, an old Audi. It wasn't really worth a lot, but it was worth a lot to us because it was our big audio demo car that we used for car shows. You'll remember the car, you know, with the platform on top. There was a Bentley and a Ferrari. The Ferrari was in the booth and the Bentley was outside. The Bentley had corner damage to the front and the Ferrari was pretty much totaled from the front end of it. In between the McLaren and the Ferrari was the chrome green Lamborghini Huracan. You can see in the images here. This particular vehicle was not claimed on my insurance. I spent my own hard-earned money to put this car right. But here's the thing. It's amazing how many of you in the industry can actually come and support and stand up for us, especially when such violations like this have been put out there. You could have come forward and support and say, actually, do you know what? This is a load of bullshit because we know cash didn't do that. And here's the reason why. The people behind the hurricane could have spoke up if they wanted to. But they didn't because you know why? Everybody's enjoying this. Everybody is enjoying this that wants to see us fall. I'm pretty sure there was something else out there. Um, I can't remember exactly what it was. Was it Mel or someone that had a 488? Sam Tires or whatever it is. Because I'm pretty sure they've got a court case against him and taking him to court. Apparently it's common knowledge. You can just Google it. <sighs> you know, it's, um, it's quite tiring. I'm responding to someone like this, to be fair. I mean, you can clearly see the guy's got verbal diarrhea. He just makes stuff up and just <laughs> comes out of his mouth. It's just, it's uh, unbelievable. I mean, you need to Google it for yourself. Cream Developments court case, nothing. Have a look for yourself. I mean, I don't even need to do this. And, and also, at the same time, touching on this court case business, um, there is no court case. We haven't been taken to court because you can't take someone to court when there's an ongoing claim that's open. It doesn't make sense. How can you take me to court for not being paid for a car for an insurance claim that's still ongoing? It doesn't make sense. So again. Okay, so there you have it, guys. Proof and evidence beyond any reasonable doubt that we did not torch our own place down, okay? We did not commit fraud. We haven't been paid out for clients' vehicles. Um, of course, uh, I agree there is an incriminated voice recording there that doesn't look good for anyone. Uh, and at the same time, what you have to understand is there's reasons behind it, which I've given, and no action was actually taken on it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for part three.